Hello, everybody. Welcome to Pits to Pixels. This is Patch Gurney, and this is my podcast. And on this series, I'm doing right now. This part of the series has to do with TT Tips. TT Tips is a platform for this over years ago to show how to use the TT platform. I was tweeting these out on my personal handle before I moved over to TT Marketing, and now I do it for TT Marketing and do it in my own personal account as well. So here's kind of a recap of some of the tips we've got this week on the TT platform. How do you use the TT platform? A lot of this is actually questions that are asked to me by traders and customers on how to use the platform. So they ask me how to use the platform. I'll generate a tip that kind of shows how to do that because obviously if one person doesn't understand it, someone else doesn't as well too. So we get it out there. So these are some of the things that I've asked and things I've answered in the last few weeks. This is specifically stuff that I published just this past week. So the first tip we'll talk about here is Use the order book widget to change order parameters, including order type, for example, turn limit order into TT iceberg order. What does that mean? So you've got a limit order sitting in your order book and let's say it's a thousand lot and you're out or something like that and you realize it's not getting very far, it's not doing much. You might want to parse that out or it's in the notes or something like that. You might want to break that down into smaller slices. So you can do that. You can change your limit order into an iceberg order or some sort of duration order and slice it out and move it into smaller pieces to hopefully get the order executed. So the next tip we looked at was configure hotkey to quickly place bids and offers in the inside market. Now this question came about because I've been asked this many times, why can't you just have a button on MD Trader, just join the best bid, join the best offer? You don't really have that, a lot of reasons behind that, but what you can do is you can set up a hotkey to do that. You can do it in ABL, you can create an order type like that. That's one way to do it. And I might show that in the weeks coming up and I've shown that in the past, but I'll show it again. But this is another way to do it. This is the hotkeys functionality. How with hotkeys, you can do all sorts of stuff. You can create all sorts of different ways of order entry and order management based off of hotkeys off a keyboard. Real easy, real quick, real simple. It's good to know, learn about that stuff. There's a link to it there in the tweet you can get to. Next tip that we looked at was highlight aggregated sales and time in sales widget to identify quantity values that are not single prints or consist of multiple trades consolidated with a one second aggregation time window. Okay, so time and sales by default aggregates all trades within a single second into one quantity, basically. Breaks it up into one big quantity, so you kind of have that, not breaks it up, it's kind of folds into one quantity. So sometimes you want to break that out and see what's really going on. Well, now with TT, you can set a switch on TT that'll actually highlight like that. So if you look at the left there, on the left, that's the standard time and sales. On the right, where I have the yellow arrows going to, that is showing time and sales with the highlight set. The highlights basically tell you, okay, this quantity is actually more than one trade. And you can also see if you hover over the actual quantity, you can get a little breakdown too. So that nine lot up there, the top one is actually two orders was a seven lot and a two lot, seven lot, two lot. That composed the nine lot. So you can do that now with NB Trader. That will last that for a long time. It's there now, it's easy to do set that up you'll like that it's a good way to know if that was a single or multiple orders that went through there so the next tip uh next tweet was a market update about crypto next tip was expand the pop-up or the pop-up alert notification to pause or edit that particular alert logic some of you don't even know a lot of people don't even know that we have alerts on tt we do have alerts we have a very detailed robust alert functionality and you can go in and build alerts on all sorts of parameters on you know, price, on volume, on trade execution, on an algo doing something, an algo pausing, an algo being completed. You can set alerts on all sorts of different functionality within your trading scope, within your trading arena. So you can set alerts. But what I'm showing right here is that when you have an alert pop up on the, on the window like that, you can actually click on that alert and modify the alert. So you can actually say, hey, I don't want this alert to go off this often, or I want to just close this or call, pause it or cancel it. You can do that. So you have that functionality right in that pop-up message. So that's a neat little tip to have. If uh, I know sometimes I get way too many alerts and I want to deal with, so I just want to go and pause something or want to clean some out. You can do that right there in the pop-up message. Next tweet was a AGS tweet about corn. Look at that, corn so it would fill. All right. Next tweet was... Market view and TT, stocks, rows, and treasuries, market update. So then we have a repeat of the time and sales tweet. Scrolling down, scrolling down. Then we have a repeat of the pop up alert. Uh, next one, this is actually a customer question that came in as well, too. Trade order profiles that declare a default quantity to ensure that your order quantity widgets see with the proper quantity after your own instrument. So the question was hey, I've got a product. I've got all these MB traders set up my, in my, in my, uh, workspace and let's say this past week we were rolling treasuries 
And now when I roll my contract from set to December, my default quantity, which was 50, is now back to zero or one or something like that. Why is that happening? How to get around that? Well, this is the way to get around it. Order profiles is a very, very powerful part of the platform. It's a very, very powerful tool. Get to know it. This shows you how you can go in and set an order profile default quantity for a product. And every time you change that product or call that product, regardless of the expiry, it's going to put that default quantity in. So that's a great tip to have. It's a great piece of functionality. Get to know that. Uh, the next tweet was a market update. I can look at that. Another market update, nothing real extraordinary going on there. Next tweet was add the source column to the order book, fills orders and fills widget to view the name of the widget and application that originally plays in order. All right, so you're trading your desktop, you're trading on your browser, you're trading on your phone, you're all over the place. Sometimes you need to know where, which order was this. This is just another identifier for you. Did I put this order in when I was you know, walking down the hallway? I put this order and I was sitting at my desk. You can find out where you put this in. It's particularly useful for, for risk managers and things like that, but it's way for you to keep track of orders a little more precisely. You can actually have, there are identifiers on TT to say, hey, this order was placed from your desktop app. This window, this order was placed from the browser. This order was placed from TT Mobile. So you can identify that in OFW now. We got a grains update. Let's see what the next tweet was. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Then we had another update about just the markets. And the next tweet, next tweet, next tweet is our guy, Anthony Crudelli, features radio, features radio, great podcast. I learn stuff in there every week, literally every week. And I've been in this game for 30 years, longer than 20 years actually. But um, I learn stuff every week. And this was another great one we he had on the, what is this? Learn about high type flag patterns and gain insight on trading psychology employed by 2019 U.S. investing champion Leif Sore in this episode of Features Radio with Anthony Crudelli. So this guy's more of an equity trader, but again, trading is trading to a great extent, so he gives some great tips. A lot of it has to do with poker a little bit again, and a lot of it has to do with his trade psychology. So you'll learn some great things in there. Go check it out. Check out Features Radio. Always recommend listening to that podcast. Next tip was our big announcement about MySteel. What is MySteel? Who is MySteel? MySteel is a big, big steel trading management execution group out of Singapore and China. And TT is partnered with them. We're going to provide a matching pool for them to actually do block trades and do some different type of functionality. Primarily, it's going to go live uh, in Q4, and it's going to be for iron ore and some steel products. It'll expand into more Chinese products over time, but this is going to be a new liquidity, liquidity pool for you. So if you want to spread contracts from, let's say, DCE, iron ore, you've got another pool of liquidity now that's going to be basically off floor, not off floor, the floor doesn't really exist anymore, but off primary venue type of liquidity. So almost like a dark pool, but not a dark pool. It'll be more lit. You'll learn more about that coming up. This is a really exciting opportunity because these guys are huge. My steel is monstrous, big quantity, huge, huge, huge group out of China, out of China and Singapore and the APAC region. So Real excited about this. It's going to be a new opportunity for you for new liquidity pool, basically, to get into these things. And again, it's starting off with iron ore and, and steel contracts in Q4 of this year. Next tweet, repeated the order profiles tweet. So we are kind of covered that one a little bit. And we have a repeat of the order profiles column that shows where this order came from. Next, we had a market update. That's... Uh, that's TT Mobile, that's the markets card. And I showed, of course, MB Trader, all the good stuff. You can move around really easily in there. Next tweet was, get these, get these questions on us too. It's like, okay, why, why are we showing a price in a certain contract, but there's no quantity there? There's, no L, there's an LTP, but no LTQ. How does that happen sometimes? Because a lot of times it's implied. Uh, in this instance, this is quantity that came out of a spread. So if a calendar spread is executed and the legs aren't actually executed themselves in the outright market, you're going to see a price, not a quantity, because we'll apply out a price, but there's not going to be a quantity there because there's no direct quantity traded there. So that's why that happens. Uh, good to know. Kind of clears up some questions some people have. That was, an, that was an actual question that came in from the field. I saw it on a ticket and said, hey, that should probably be out there a little bit. There's more about the my steel deal. Uh, next, we had take advantage of the fill and audit trail services, which periodically collects your TT fill and audit trail data and CSV file and makes each file available for retrieval via, via secure port. This is more of a risk management thing. This is more of a bank type of back office thing or an FCN type of back office thing. And, but, uh, but actually, just a lot of order desk users as well, too. They just want to, every half hour, every hour, they just want to get a dump 
of all the fills of all the information. You can do that. You can configure it on TT. That's how you do it. Or that there's a link in there that actually show you how to do that. Um, if we can get to that link. We click on the link. No, that's a, that's a hashtag. Click on the link. It's going to take me into this page that shows you how to do a little bit in the um, TT community. It's back to the tips. That was our grains ags tip. Wait for it to catch up there a little bit. There's a bit of a lag going through because I'm broadcasting my phone onto my Mac here. So back to that quantity one, back to the oil W one. Okay, here's a new one. Get there, get there, get there. Waiting, waiting, waiting. Okay. Use auto for the rules of pre built auto spreader logic that will assist you in gaining an edge with the spread trading. So let me look at auto spreaders. Like, how do I do this? How do I get around this? I want to do whatever. I don't, I don't want to quote this much. I want to quote more. I want to get a quote aggressive in this case. Or if, or if I get legged, I want this to have blah, 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 blah. A lot of things you might want to do. Something we did, we moved to TT seven, eight years ago, was we kind of stripped out a lot of the default auto, sp auto spreader rules that were built into there because they kind of added a little bit of latency. They did like these negative checks. The auto spreader had to go through and say, hey, is this rule set? Is that rule set? Is that rule set? So we stripped all that out to add more speed. So it's a faster platform now, faster spreading execution platform. Now those rules, you have to go back and add them manually if you want them. If you want to check into, you know, stuff like if you're quoting too much or you don't want to quote when you're in the inside market, all these type of things, they're in there. They're easy to find. Click on them, read about them, and to read about that. And um, let's click on that link. Pretty much always have a link back to the help files to show you to get to stuff. So let's click on that link. No, oh, that one didn't work. Oh, I got to fix that. So that's not a good link, but we'll go back to, um, let me get that fixed and we'll keep moving forward now. Market update, market update. This is, um, okay, this is a big one for auto spread as well to avoid over quoting. What is over quoting? You should know what over quoting is if you're doing over spreading whatsoever. That's essentially when you're sending too many messages to the exchange and they get a little finicky about that and they're gonna find you for that. You don't want that. So you wanna avoid the over quoting. You don't wanna put all these quotes out there that have very little chance of being filled and they're really just creating noise. This is one of the ways to do that. So avoid over quoting violations on exchanges by using auto spreader rule quote best bid, best ask. To cancel a quote order if the price is outside the user defined number of ticks from the inside market. So, do you really want to put a quote out there that's five ticks beyond the best ask of the best? Probably not. It's not going to be a fill. It's not going to do much good. It's kind of just a waste. It's just an extra message the exchange is going to count for you. So, click on the link here. The link's going to take you to um, auto spreader rules reference and it's going to show you how to actually build that rule and what that rule actually says and does so always take advantage of those links to get back into the help library or wherever i'm pointing you to because there's going to be more detailed information about that tip there so i'll keep scrolling down and see what we get into do you market update market update uh, this looks like auto spreader rules again that's another auto spreader rule. Pre built auto spreader logic will assist you in gaining an edge when spread trading. Okay, we talked about that a little bit. Talk about the over quoting, talked about that already. We'll go down. Next tip was a market update. I'm not going to talk about that too much. Now we have some blah, blah, blah that goes through the corporate Twitter feed. What do we have here? This is this is functionality I built actually back in 7X. It just kind of got moved over to X or to TT. This is the enhanced option search in the TT platform. So if you click more at the bottom left corner of Market Explorer to access the advanced mode to easily find option instruments based on term and strike. That can be a really hairy thing to do. When you go, want to go in and you want to find a specific option strike or an options expiry or, or a strategy or whatever it may be, that can be very challenging to do. A lot of you are unaware of the fact that in the lower left corner there of the search window, you've got a more button. Click on that, that goes to the expanded search helps really winnow it down. You can now say, I only want December contracts. I only want, I only want between, you know, 4250 and 4350. You can actually narrow it down and really winnow down your field. This saves huge amounts of time. It's a great feature. Get in there, use it, learn about it. You'll save yourself a great deal of headache and hassle by using the advanced search in Market Explorer. Next tip. This is another wonderful tip. This is another features radio show podcast. And this is with J Biondo TT. J Biondo. J Biondo has been with TT since we bought Norensic several years ago. 
Uh, Norensic had a lot of the spoofing type of identification and market surveillance stuff that we wanted to get. It was great technology, fantastic machine learning that they actually used to actually identify market malfeasance, basically, all sorts of market deviance, moral sorts of bad trading, malicious trading type of activity, easily identifiable with TT score. Jay just hopped on to a call with Anthony Crudelli of Futures Radio and talked about that. One of the more fascinating things that came out of this is, and this never really occurred to me too much, but when you're algo trading or, you know, some people call it HFT trading, but even just regular algo trading, if you're algo trading or, or if you're code-based trading, you have a very defined list or very defined rule base of why you're trading, why you're executing these trades. So CFTC comes knocking your door and says, hey, you're spoofing, you're doing something wrong here. Well, you can say, you can point to your code and say, listen, my code says, this is what my code's doing. This is what the actual intent was. There's no spoofing type of mentality there at all. It just so happened, yeah, we put a bunch of orders in, blah, blah, blah. But if you look at the logic behind this code, that's not what it's doing. There's nothing malicious to it whatsoever. And the CFTC is like, okay, yeah, you're right. That looks legit. We like that. If you're a manual point and click trader and you're in and out all the time, you're basically scalping as a point and click trader. You can't really justify it quite as much. It's like, why did you cancel those orders? Well, I felt like it. Well, I don't remember. You know, it's a little bit more, sh not shady, I won't say, but a little bit more um, cloudy, I guess, is the word for it. Because you can't really necessarily always think back. This is something that happened three, six months ago. What was going on? I don't know why I did that. So algo traders certainly have, may actually have an edge there uh, when it comes to compliance for that reason, because they have a code base that can actually point to you and say, this is why I made that trade. This is why I did all that. It's all very detailed right here in the script. So something to keep in mind, something to think about. I hadn't really thought about that, but that's a that was a very interesting observation. And Jay gets into a lot of the stuff too. What does the CFTC actually look for? What are they trying to find? What do they think looks suspicious, looks malicious? Well, he's been dealing with the banks. He's been dealing with the regulators for a long, long time. He knows this stuff. Listen to this podcast. You'll learn some great things. I learned some great things. And you'll find out much more about what the CFTC looks for and what the different regulators look at when they're trying to identify uh, bad behavior, basically, in trading markets. So next tip, scroll, scroll, scroll. It's a market update. And why aren't we scrolling up here? I'm scrolling over here. And my screen stopped updating, so. Well, there's only one more tip out there actually for the week. And that one more tip had to do with um, learn how to access data within the analytics block and use the calculation of your own indicators. What I'm showing in that tweet, and I'm sorry it didn't come up here, but it's, it's there. What I'm showing in that tweet is that with the analytics block on TT, not only can you use the canned technical indicators that are in there, like different moving averages, Bollinger Bands, Stochastics, RSI, things like that. You can use this to actually just generate data and pull data pull historical data and create your own indicators because that's a question I get asked all the time. How can I actually import my own indicators into TT? You can kind of do that. You can build them your own through ADL. It's not that difficult to do. I can do it. I'm not a coder. I figured it out. And, um, you know, there it is. So you can do that. There are great ways to get around that. Ask questions. If you have a question when you're in ADL, something like that, we'll, we'll get to enter a ticket. They'll answer it. I'll answer it. Or one of the guys will answer it. We'll get some information out to you. I'm working on some stuff too. It's kind of ADL 101 based of information to get people up and running a little more quickly. Don't forget also this week coming up, if you're a TT customer, we have TT office hours coming on Tuesday, Tuesday at 2 p.m. Central time. And we're going to talk about some questions that people have submitted over the past. And we're also going to, I'm going to walk through TT order types, some of the different order types and how you can use them, how you can configure them. Primarily it's going to be basic configurations. Because most configurations when you see the bracket orders is my base case. And you're going to see all the different type of configurations, what the, all this stuff means. There's a lot of stuff in those configuration windows. So I'm going to show you how to get through there. And that's it. Oh, there's the tweet I was just talking about. There is the um, analytics black and white indicators. There's a lag here. I'm going from my iPhone to my Mac. So it's lagged. I don't know what that's all about. We'll get that figured out next week. But hopefully you got something out of this. And if not, sorry. Send me your questions. Let me know what you want to talk about. And I'll be happy to explain it to you. That's what I kind of do. I'm kind of the TT answer guy. So if you have any questions about the platform, you want to know how this works or that works, send me a tweet, send me an email, do whatever you want to do. My email is patrickatrade.tt. Twitter, of course, is at Patrick Rooney. So just send me a note. I'll be happy to help you out and assist you with that. All right. That's it for today. Hope you all had a good week and we will talk to you later.